Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to um, the Dice Tower. And we're talking, we're continuing going through the worst games of all time, according to Board Game Geek, which is going to probably bother some people because you want the worst, worst game. I mean, I mean, there's games out there that are pretty terrible. Not all these games are actually as horrible as you might think. We've just been going through, over the course of 2020, the worst games on Board Game Geek. 10,000 and below. We're now at the very bottom. Actually, we're going through the bottom 100 and... Uh, 15 uh, or 18, the bottom 118, just because of the num how they do the numbering system. And uh, someone here in, in chat says, I hope the 100 worst games are not just a waste of time. Well, most of them are a waste of time, but actually bad for you. <laughs> well, there are not many games I don't know that are actually bad for you. There's probably a few out there. Otherwise, there has to be worse games out there, sure. But I just want to talk about these because I find this to be an interesting thing to take a look at. And uh, where are we at? There we go. Um, and I don't know. This is just something that's interesting to me. And if this gets you depressed, next week we are moving into the best of 2020. Uh, we talk about negative games during Dice Tower sometimes, but we want it to be a mostly positive channel. And like I said, I might even have something positive to say about some of these games. <clears throat> Not all of them. Before we get started, I want to do a shout out to Rodney from Simply Elegant Games, to the Bastard Cafe in Copenhagen, Denmark, to Justin Williams, and to Larry Ted McBride from Skullwink.com. Also, Alex and Anna Sarsani, thank you all for sponsoring our show. Thank you for being a Kickstarter backer. We really appreciate it. All righty. So, I'm excited. I'm ready to be here. I'm ready to take a look at the bottom ranked games on Board Game Geek. Now remember, Board Game Geek tends to rank kids games lower. They tend to rank dexterity games lower. And they also rank bad games fairly low. So here we go. Let's pop this on here. There are a lot of games on Board Game Geek. There are hundreds of thousands of them actually, but only 19,920 of them are rated. And so we're taking a look at those. You have to have a certain number of ratings before you get rated. Alrighty, so also remember every day Board Game Geek updates their database. So yesterday we already talked about Bionicle, Lord of the Rings, The Search, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? What do you mean? And Rock'em Sock'em Robots. But we do have some more to talk about. So we're going to start here with Ants in the Pants, which is a fun song. Pop Up Pirate. Elephant, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Quidditch card game, and Pogs. We're probably going to take a look at every game now that we're this far down. So Ants in the Pants, which is a game in which you click on these ants and make them jump in the pants. That's the whole game. Um, ants in the Pants is pretty bad uh, just from a quality standpoint. I've never liked it because these ants, I don't know if you played the game, they flatten out. And you have to constantly be bending them back in position. They're very similar to those frogs that you get at uh, Chuck E. Cheese for uh, five tickets when you can't get anything else. Um, yeah, I like kids' dexterity games. This is not one of the better ones. Mikhail says, Tom, they also rate non-English games lower. I don't think that's true, actually. Um, I, don't, I don't know why someone who isn't speaking in English would rate a non-English game low. Like, oh, I can't understand this. I'll rank it low. I think you might mean they get fewer ratings. I don't think they get lower ratings. Alrighty. Pop-Up Pirates. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of versions of this one where you're just sticking something in this picture here. It's flags into a castle. Well, that's not as exciting as putting uh, swords into Jack Sparrow. Or in this case, keys into Mickey Mouse. Whatever, this is just a, a kid's game about teaching them how to gamble. Elephant. This one I don't know anything about. A dexterity game for preschoolers. A motorized elephant blows nylon butterflies and you catch them with nets. Well, that sounds like a fun game for kids. Fun haters. All right, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Quidditch, Quidditch card game. It tries to recreate the Quidditch matches. You know, if Quidditch was a game, I'd rank it a three because the end game, I mean, there's people have talked about this enough, but it's just a bad game. Uh, 
You just play all these cards, someone plays the Golden Snitch and gets a thousand points, and nothing else matters. Pogs. Ah, Pogs. 1920. Really? 1920? It says it was originally a game played with milk caps, which originate in Hawaii. It comes from Pog brand juice. And you just throw Pogs down. I don't know much about Pogs, except that it was extremely popular when I was a teenager. I had no interest in it. I thought it was a really stupid game. I said, it doesn't really matter. You get all these Pogs. They all look like this, but they don't do anything different. That drove me crazy. So I'm with people on uh, who are ranking it low. Oh, yeah. I didn't even rank it. I'll give it a four. All right. Then we have Edison & Co. Wheel of Fortune. Angry Birds knock on wood. Wow. BGG hates Angry Birds. And Quelf. <laughs> and Arne. All right. Edison & Co. This is a real grande game. I've not played this one. This one's interesting that, it, again, to be in the bottom 100, you know, it makes sense to see mass market games get there. It makes sense to see dexterity and kids games get there which i don't agree with but it's really interesting to see a euro game here i wonder why people dislike it so much let's take a look at the the ratings spread for it there's the ratings breakdown there whoo 110 and 19 so someone likes it why is it so important terribly broken game oh a broken game Solid but unremarkable racing game. No way to plan ahead. Well, some people say it's quirky fun. A bad racing game. Well, there you go. Wheel of Fortune. Of course, Wheel of Fortune is an interesting game. I found when I taking the board game out of it, Wheel of Fortune, I find some problems with the the, the wheel is just too lucky, right? But the guessing the words and everything, I, I I guess it just doesn't probably work as well in board game form. Angry Birds, knock on wood. This is another Angry Birds, another dexterity game. No, why not? Who cares? Build a castle, launch at it. That seems fun. Quelf. So I hate Quelf, as you can see with a two. I get why people like Quelf. But Quelf is a game that tells you to be silly. Like, literally, it will say, put a pot on your head. And then do something. That's the whole game. Some people love it. I was at a gaming event one time and someone brought it and everyone who played it had a fantastic time. Hooray. That's, uh, that's okay, right? But man, do I hate it. Because I want a game to be silly as a natural cause because of the people playing the game or because of um, the game kind of leads that direction. But not that it tells you, like, stand up and spin around and sing I'm a little teapot is not funny inherently. That's where I run into a problem. Arne, this is, the concept of Arne is new. It's cheeky, creative, and chaotic. Well, it can't be new. It's 2002. I love this. Arne is suitable for all ages. A few practice games and children from the age of seven start playing seriously. <laughs> I, love, I, want, I, I love whoever wrote this um, description. I know nothing about this one. Hmm. The fast-paced card game that takes you from hero to zero and back again. Hmm. Alrighty, here we go. Monopoly Electronic Banking. Carcassonne the Dice Game, which you see I gave a five to. Here's Uno. Banda Spillet. And Shut the Box. Alright. So Monopoly Electronic Banking. This is another version of Monopoly. And Monopoly is ranked low across the board. And this one here has a way to, you know, different pieces. But this one has a backlash against it because it gets rid of the paper money and you store your stuff on a credit card. And I'm still mind boggled that people hate this so very much. I mean, these are the same, some of the people who hate this are the same people who pull out their phone to add up the points at the end of a Euro game. It's no different here. That's always mind boggled me that people dislike that part of this. I already mentioned that some. But again, the Monopolies are all ranked pretty low. So I think, well, we'll see where Monopoly is. We haven't run across straight Monopoly yet. Carcassonne the Dice Game. This is actually one of the first, I guess, 
maybe roll and rights. The, the dice are not pretty, first of all. That's the D Carcassonne dice there. Compare that to the Carcassonne tiles. Yes, you can build a little city, and you got these catapults and meeples, and I don't even remember how it works. I just remember that it's really boring. You're trying to score points, kind of like Yahtzee in a sense, where you roll them. Just not a good game. Uno, which, by the way, is lower ranked than Dos, which it shouldn't be because Dos is worse. Uno is is a, what's it, Crazy Eights, right? So Crazy Eights, I get why people like it. And you'll see a, a games that changed my life. I have a thing on Uno. So I'm not going to trash Uno. I really dislike the game. But I don't dislike the memories this game has given me. Uh, me and my family played Uno till I was sick of it. But I remember playing my family. Uno has no strategy in it. You literally play a card from your hand that's the best card to play. Maybe you have a choice between two or three, but still, they're all the same. It doesn't matter. You don't know what the next person has in their hand. But it sold a gazillion copies. So, it's still ranked very low on Board Game Geek, but 19,818. But, all right. Bandisplat, the farmer game. Okay, this is a Swedish classic roll and move game about farmers and farming. Wonderful see the farming game on the bottom 100 here. That's in America, too. Roll a move. Meh. Shut the box. This is such a, a simple game. You roll dice, and then if you roll three and a six, you can make the three and six go down. If you roll nine, you make the nine go down. Is this only... I thought there was... It went up to 12. I might be wrong. It's so... This is straight luck. This is like a game that... It's not really even a game. It's more see what happens. I can see why people think this one's... So low. All right, here we go. Scrabble Slam, Dragonology the game, Don't Wake Daddy. That's good advice, actually. Euro Business and Scrabble Junior. Well, there's two Scrabble games back to back. Scrabble Slam, Fast Pace. Create a four-letter word to replace one letter at a time. The first person to get rid of all their cards wins. That doesn't sound very good. Dragonology the Game. This is based on the New York Times bestselling title, Dragonology. Wow. Those pieces look like they're from a version of Clue. Really nice pieces. I mean, comparatively. Well, this is one we got to see what the comments say. What do people say? What's the ratings breakdown? Now we got a couple tens. Woo -hoo! That's a lot of low ratings there. Roll and move. Roll and move. People don't like roll and move. Okay. Okay. Artwork's amazing. Seems straight. No strategic. Dragons and that's it. A roll and move mechanic. Dragons, but a random game. But dragons. <laughs> well, there you have it. Don't wake daddy. So uh, this is one of those kid style games that I've never played. What's that? Don't wake the Hulk. That is don't wake the Hulk. Don't wake Hulk. I wouldn't. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about this one. This one's I. This one's one I've seen a lot, and you're trying not to. It's you know your typical "don't make the thing pop or explode" type game. Meh. Euro business from 1983. Oh, this is the Polish version of Monopoly. Man, people don't like Monopoly. Doesn't matter what language, it's getting voted down. Scrabble Jr. I know I'm not a big fan of Scrabble, but I am surprised. Oh, I've played Scrabble Jr. Huh. I remember this. I remember this board. It has some of the words. Not not this particular one. It says Catan and stuff on it. But I played I played a version of this. I just this board really brought it back to me. Nah. Alrighty, we're not done yet, folks. There's still more to come. Let's take a look at Le Boom. I gave that one a five. Penguin, oh, I hate Penguin, and I'll talk about it. Hengist, Wadjet, and Biting Off Heads. It's a terrible name for a game. So Le Boom is really not a game, but I kept it for a long time, actually, because it was an interesting way to see who went first. It's very similar to LCR. You roll the die, you move the bomb around, and eventually the bomb blows up. That's terrible. It's not even a game. But, like I said, it could be an entertaining way to pick who the start player is. Penguin. Now, there's a couple problems with Penguin. Now, Penguin actually was re-implemented 
you can see here by Game of Thrones and by Penguin Party. And I believe I reviewed Penguin Party. I reviewed a version of Penguin Party, which was just cards, okay? And so was the Game of Thrones ones, which we've already talked about, also ranked very low. This is not a good game. You're just stacking stuff. But the Fantasy Flight version of this, which had these plastic penguins here, were almost impossible to stack on each other. They have these. You can see them. There's these little slits in the penguins, and they have to sit an exact certain way. And it makes it sound like it's a dexterity game, but it's not. It's literally just stacked the same color on top of the same color. It's, it's, the game is terrible, but the components were so bad and so frustrating to work with that in subsequent games, they changed it to just a card game because it didn't even make sense that these 3D pieces. It was, it was really bad. Hengist is designed by Uwe Rosenberg. Like the king of board game designers, Agricola, Caverna, Feast for Odin, Bonanza, and Hengist, a two-player game that got universally bad ratings. When I first played it, I said, I have to be missing something because this game is just trash. It's just random. The whole game, you're connecting these things. It's random. And the pieces were bad. It's like, how did this one get published? No one knows. We also think it was in... Uwe Rosenberg's sock drawer, and they said, we need a game right now. And he's like, oh, I have this one, but it's not finished. And they were like, too bad, we're printing it. You signed a contract. That's the only thing that we can think of. Wadjet. I know this is a very popular game. I want to say this is, uh, is this from, was this in England more? It says it's a more involved game of Clue. I don't know enough, of, enough about it to know how good it is, but I can see that it's ranked very lowly on Board Game Geek. This cat seems to be enjoying it, though. Biting off heads. So James Ernest has designed games all over the spectrum. I don't know that many people accuse him of being a great designer. He has a few games that are higher ranked, but nothing amazingly ranked. Well, I mean, let's take a look. He's done his highest ranked game is Lords of Vegas, which is 409. Okay, I take that back. That's, that's pretty high. And Tak, a good abstract strategy game. Um, so in the two, two games in the top 1,000, can't complain about that. But you'll notice 218 games, and many of them quite low. He has these crazy ideas. And, I mean, if you look here, this board and dinosaurs and stuff. But this one is just one. And a lot of his ideas just didn't work. They were funny ideas, but not great games. All right, then we have Bowling Dice, Nero, Burn in Hell, CSI, the board game, and Letter of Mark. Oh, my word. So many of these games are bringing back memories as I look at these. All right. So, Bowling Dice, this one. All the fun of lane bowling without the gutter balls. Okay. Looks like you're just trying to roll to see if you knock down pins. Nero is from Alexander Berg. This game was very, very much um, argued over when this game came out. I remember this because people said it's not a good game at all. I never played this one, so I don't know. But it was called Broken. It was called one of the worst war games ever made. So there was a lot of fuss about it back in the day. I don't know much more about it. This one's from Steve Jackson Games, Burn in Hell. And I assume that it's ranked lowly just because of the theming of it. As you find, I guess, these terrible people and make them burn in hell. That's very, there's there's a lot of, there's like a very small audience of people who this is for. Then you mix that with the fact that it probably wasn't a very good game. And you're not going to see a lot of people excited about that. CSI Crime Scene Investigation. This one's interesting to me, not because it's ranked low. I assume almost any mass market game that's a slapped on theme, but that it's this low. Which means enough people must have played it. But I wonder if there's a lot of people who like CSI who also play board games. Maybe that's what it is. Letters of Mark. I remember this one a lot. This is from Bruno Faduti. And it's from Fantasy Flight. And it came with a whole pile of really cool plastic ships. And it's just an absolute terrible, boring game. I mean, it's really boring. I, Again, this is one of those games that when I, I pulled it out, there's a tiny bit of bluffing, and I said we must be missing something, but we weren't. Every designer 
as a worse game that they design. And you're seeing some big name designers. We saw Uwe Rosenberg. Now we see Bruno Fiduti. But if you ever see this on sale and you want those plastic ships, you probably get this one for like a buck at this point. All right, Cthulhu Dice, A Chaotic Life, Uncle Wiggly, Don't Spill the Beans, and Lotto. All right, Cthulhu Dice. This is, um, you're just rolling these dice. The dice are kind of neat, but they're hard to read. I remember that. It's kind of like just a random dice rolling game. But like I said, really nice dice. So if you want Cthulhu-themed dice with tentacles and stuff on them, you can get it for that. A Chaotic Life. This one I don't know. This is from Grubton. You're going through and happiness and sad. Candy robot cookies. The artwork looks cute. So let's find out why people hate this so much. Maybe it's a Kickstarter that didn't deliver. Cute concept. Gameplay's terrible. Terrible rules. Meh. Storytelling. Mechanics don't work. Okay, so that's a really bad game. Well, there you go. Uncle Wiggly. So from 1916, I played this at my grandma's house. I remember this uh, a lot uh, that she had. I remember at the time, I didn't think much of it. Like, eh, it's, you know, your typical roll move. This one's so far down because it is just a flip a card and move or whatever. But it is also pretty well known. So it's going to get more votes to be in the bottom. All right, don't spill the beans. My uncle, who will never watch this video, so he won't know I'm telling tales, went to the hospital for sticking these beans so far up his nose that he couldn't get out. And I think that there might be like some things now where kids can't play. I remember playing a version of this with actual kidney beans, like the actual beans. I don't know why. Were they just in the game? Like someone, I don't remember, but I remember playing with actual beans. Yeah, this is it. You know, you're putting beans in the top and you don't want them to spill. It, have you ever noticed, though, how the don't spill the beans pot looks very similar to the Kool-Aid man uh, who's gone a little crazy? It's a kid's dexterity game. Lotto. This is very similar to Bingo. All right. Well, there you go. It's basically a version of Bingo. All right, where are we at now? Snap, this is from 1866, 10Z. Global Survival, Mad Gab, and Titanic, the board game. All righty, Snap. Milton Bradley, you deal the cards. You place it face up. When you see two cards, you call it Snap. Oh, so it's basically the same as Jungle Speed. But you just say snap. All right. I don't know why it's ranked so low then. Tenzi. All right. Well, Tenzi has a lot of games possible. You roll dice, and whoever gets dice of all the same number yells, Tenzi's the winner. This one is for sale everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. So we can, la we can look at it and say, terrible game, bad game, horrible game, whatever. Also, the guy who made it is like, I don't care because he's probably quite wealthy. Global Survival. This is from Avalon Hill. This is one of those games that when I was younger in the, and just getting in the game hobby, like Avalon Hill, people like, don't play Global Survival because it's awful. I thought the cover looked neat with all those flags. Um, but, whew, I mean, look at the, the number of ratings here. A 10, an 8. Look how, look how many ones there are. A Monopoly-style game. A disaster of a game. All the choices are worth a fraction of a percent. A fraction of a fraction of a percent of your cash. Nothing actually pays off. <laughs> Destroyed on purpose. <laughs> this game got so, so much negative press. Like this person said, publishing has had to be contributed to Avalon Hill's demise. There's some possible that that's the truth of it. This was published near the end of the original Avalon Hill's uh, era. Yeah, not very good. Mad Gab. I don't hate Mad Gab as much as the next person, but it's basically you read these words like ride out these dorm. And someone else has to listen to that and realize that you're saying ride out the storm. Or up racked hick gulch oak. 
is a practical joke, a practical joke. And you just got to keep saying it so your team gets it. It's very one note, which I can see why people hate it. Titanic, this is the game everyone talks about. This is the game that when you were a kid, if you saw this or saw it at a thrift store, you, like me, probably thought, that looks amazing. I mean, it is kind of weird, you know, to play a game based on a tragedy, but since the tragedy is like 100 years old at this point, it's kind of, you know, I always, it's made me think like, will modern day tragedies have games made about them in 50 years? Who knows? Um, but uh, I, from everything I heard, a roll move, bad game all around. I think this one's low because so many people wanted it to be good and it just wasn't. All right, SimCity, the card game. Buckaroo, the Game of Life 40th Anniversary Edition. I'll be giving that one a two. Jax, an Urban Myth. All right, SimCity, the card game. I wanted to buy this game, actually. This came out when all the other collectible card games came out. And at the time, I love SimCity. I love collectible card games. I don't. The only thing I could think of that stopped me from buying SimCity was the fact that other collectible card games existed that I was buying and I couldn't afford them because I could afford like one pack a week or something. This looks awful. I mean, SimCity is amazing. Everyone knows that that's amazing. But this game just jumped on that collectible card game craze without actually being good. Buckaroo! The, shadows, the saddle stacking game with the moody mule. Put on the shovel, balance the bomb... The he'll kick. I've not seen this one, folks. Hmm. The Game of Life 40th Anniversary. Now, I don't think life is a great game. Um, I think the Game of Life 40th Anniversary really dumbed the game down. They got rid of the gambling part, which was the most fun. They kept the spinner, so there's that. But they got rid of a lot of the other parts of it, and I thought it just became a much more sedate game. Life was a classic. This felt too streamlined to me. Jax. I'm not a huge fan of Jax, but I get why people like it. And I played it with my kids often enough that I put six on here. I'm just terrible at it. I think I can get like three. Bounce the ball, grab one, bounce the ball, grab two. In Korea, Jax are different. I, this is one thing someone needs to explain to me. Maybe if I looked it up on the internet, I could figure it out. But the jacks, why they they look like cow traps. You know, they're there to hurt your hands. In Korea, they're these little octagonal things that are kind of filled with sand. That's what kids use. Uh, this is just, this is asking for a, a problem. Urban myth. It's true or myth cards. That's all. The hands of Abraham Lincoln statue Intentionally formed the letters A and L in American Sign Language. Okay, that's actually some interesting things. And I would love to, to I, a, a game show where you ask fact or myth. In fact, you may see something like that show up on the Dice Tower as a game show someday. But I guess it just doesn't work as a board game. All right. Slapjack. Man Bites Dog. Assassin. Lost the Game. And Trivia Poor... Pursuit Genus Edition. All right, Slapjack. Eh, I liked this as a kid. You know, it's just a, a typical shuffle the cards out, win all the cards, slap the jack when it's played to the center. You know what? I can't give this one a six. It's a five. Why am I saying this? Slapping games, but I get why people liked it. Man Bites Dog. This is just like the other one. Hilarious headline game. And... Here you make the headline from a bunch of cars. 340 pound angry model runs off with urologist. That doesn't sound great, but it doesn't sound like it's a terrible game either. Now, Assassin, I don't know why I gave Assassin a six. It's a five. Assassin is a solo game. I've actually never played the physical board game. This is one of the ones I played online, but you are going through and just business, nothing personal, and trying to stop the assassin. Now, it has one of the most iconic, idiotic covers of all time. I love this cover because of how bad it is. That assassin is so 80s coming in. But um, 
Oh, it's not a solo game. I'm sorry. I'm mixing this one up with another game. But you're moving around, trying to be an assassin. It's just a bad game from Avalon Hill. I was mixed up with another one. Sorry. But it's not very good. Lost the game. Someone in comments says, ha ha sucker, you just lost the game. I get it. That is a bad title. And once again, this is probably one that people like so much, the actual things, and which, which I think is ironic, is that one of the characters on Lost, her, the Hurley character, Jorge Garcia, is an avid board gamer. Um, an avid board gamer, sorry. And he loves board games, and here he is, a board game made about, about him. He's on the box there, and it's ranked so lowly. Sorry, Jorge. Trivial Pursuit, Genus Edition. I just don't like Trivia Pursuit. This is the original one. I'm, I, trivia questions are fine. I already, there's already some problems with trivia. You know, who knows the most obscure trivia? But the fact that it's a roll and move, and you only ever get a piece if you're on the piece of the puzzle, just ridiculous. It's a garbage game with trivia in it. All right, let's go fishing. The Hobbit, The Defeat of Smog, The Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, man. Lord of the Rings is not a question of scruples and coaster park. Let's go fishing. You have seen this one everywhere. The fish spin around in a circle, open their mouths. Kids put fishing poles in, grab them out. I don't know. I enjoy playing this. I played this with almost every single one of my children when they were small. They've all loved it. They're all bad at it, and they all cry at the beginning, but eventually they get it, and it's fun for them. So what else can we say? The Hobbit, The Defeat of Smog. Uh, I've not played this, so I cannot tell you much about it. But obviously people think it's bad. The Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring. I haven't played this one either. Is this done by the same company? Hang on, let's look at the one we just were looking at. Are they both? This is Keith Myers and Michael Stern. Now we don't know who made this out. Oh, they're just two different things. Oh, that one looks awful. Yeah, I can see why people don't like it. A question of scruples. So a question of scruples, which is a game I never played. And I never really wanted to play because scruples just seems like an odd game to me. Like, you're driving alone on the highway at night. A desperate-looking person tries to flag you down. Do you stop? You make long-distance calls as part of your work for a middle-sized firm. Do you know? Do you make private calls if you know they can't be traced? A door-to-door -door salesman comes by. He looks a little worse for wear. There's nothing you want. Do you buy something out of sympathy? Just questions that you ask, and then you're supposed to answer them honestly. And people guess, I think, if you got them. You know, it's, it's the kind of game where if you really are an evil, wicked person, you're likely not going to answer or... You know, it's just, I don't know. These are, I, I guess, good, interesting discussion topics, but. Hmm. All right, Coaster Park. This is one of the newest games to be in the very, very bottom from Pandasaurus Games from Scott Alms. Now, my rating here is a 6.5. I think we should fix that to a 6. But ah, the game's not as bad as people say, but it doesn't work like it should. You can see when they announced this game, they announced it live on a Dice Tower at our Gen Con show, and I was so excited. A game that you actually construct roller coasters, you bid on the parts, and then the marbles roll down the roller coaster, and you see if it works or not. That's amazing. The idea is phenomenally cool. It just doesn't work that well. And the auction game isn't great. So it's possible that me liking the game... Uh... Me liking the idea pushes my opinion up. I think that's very possible. Um, so I may be not the most biased of people there, but I can tell you that I've met very few people who do like the game. All right, the Mad Magazine game, Aggravation, Outdoor Survival, Chinese Checkers, and Trump the Game. All right, Mad Magazine game. You know, I thought Mad Magazine was done, but I, I was at the store yesterday and I saw a copy of Mad Magazine. Then I almost bought it just because I was curious. I wanted to pick it up and look at it, but it was right there at the uh, cashier. And, I, and you know how that is. You're like, uh, I'm, I'm, am, I, am I purchasing? or it just Anyway, I'm sure it's not a good game. Aggravation. 
Now, this box here looks really cool. But aggravation itself, I've played aggravation. I don't like it. You're just moving around the board. It's a, I give it a four. Not a very good one. I didn't recognize that cover, but I've definitely played one that looks like this or this, moving the marbles around. Typical roll and move, not a very good game. Outdoor Survival, another Avalon Hill game, but this one was at the beginning of Avalon Hill's career, but this one just is, everyone says it's awful. You're just trying to survive outdoors, and it's not fun at all from what I can tell. Chinese Checkers, I hate it. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I hate, I hate this game. Um, to me, it's just so mind numbing. The idea of jumping all over the board with super checkers is interesting. And there is a brief flash of moments at a couple points in the game where you go boom, 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 boom. But there's the beginning of the game where you slowly move out. There's the end of the game where you slowly move in. And there's the middle of the game where the entire board is clogged up. And I hate it. It's so boring. I played as much as a kid. I know a lot of people like it. There's also the amazing marble versions of Chinese checkers, which are fantastic because you, like this one here, you can bump it and totally ruin the game. Now, obviously, Trump the Game, which came out in 1989, is ranked as low as it is because of people's strong opinions about our current president. But this game was probably, if I understand, is probably pretty low before that. I remember being in a De Sears department store, not a Sears department store, but like our de Hess in Allentown, the big department store. I remember going in there and seeing this game proudly displayed there a couple of years before they closed down. And I just thought, huh, I didn't know much about, um, about who Trump was. And I learned it as time went by, but you know, he pushed the game and then sold quite a few copies. You can still find this at thrift stores all over the place. Alrighty, who wants to be a millionaire? Don't break the ice, Alien USCSS Nostromo, Monopoly Star Wars, and Kerplunk. Who wants to be a millionaire? It's a trivia game. Who wants to be a millionaire only works because there's a million dollars on the line. When there's no money, it's a boring game. It's just a series of trivia questions. Don't break the ice. This is another one that gets a bad rap. It's fun. Although it does have a problem that I mentioned with other ones, that essentially it comes down to this. If you're good at the game, this is what it ends up being, and then the next person hit a piece of ice loses. That's one of the problems with the game. Alien USCSS Nostromo. This is from Wonder Dice. It's based on the movie Alien. Well, it looks cool. Well, now I need to know why people hate it so much. Oh, I see. Publisher sold pro. Okay, so this is one where the publisher published a game. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. There are 247 ones and, and four twos. Oh, those people were being generous. And then one, eight, nine, and ten. Where's the ten? No comment. Where's the nine? No comment. Where's the eight? No comment. <laughs> oh, my word. All right, well, this is obviously a kind of a revenge strike. I don't know anything about this one, so it must be a Kickstarter or whatever. But, yeah, that seems problematic. Monopoly Star Wars. There's uh, several versions of Monopoly Star Wars. I don't like the Monopolies as a general matter of course. It makes no sense that you're walking around buying property in Endor. I do like the pieces, though. Kerplunk. Kerplunk has that other, you know, same thing I said about Don't Break the Ice, where eventually someone pulls one and all the marbles fall. But seeing the marbles fall is awesome. Oh, that's a terrible looking version of this. I had a giant Kerplunk, really big one. This is the classic one here. This plastic device pulling the sticks out, pickup sticks, no less. So you technically get two games in one and marbles, so you get three games in one. I don't know. This is not a great game, but I always liked the idea of it as a kid. All righty, moving on here. We have Bunko, Would You Rather, Go For Broke, Labyrinth, and Mind Trap. Bunko is just a dice game. You ring the bell each time a Bunko's rolls, one reaches 21. 
I know some people like this game. It's sold probably a lot. I, it doesn't sound interesting to me. Would you rather? There's a pile of these games out there. And in fact, um, sometimes when we're at a restaurant or somewhere out with my kids, they'll ask if we can play Would You Rather, and I'll pull out an app and we'll play it. And it's more of a discussion topic where we all sit and argue over whether, you know, tea is better than coffee or cows are better than dogs or what have you. Go for broke. Ah, this is one of those old classic games where you were trying to lose all your money. I, I don't think that's a bad idea. I know that the game is not great, but it has these cool spinners and everything. I don't know. You got it. I think this game, even though I give it a very bad rating, you got to give it some nostalgia points, probably. Labyrinth. This is fine. Why do people hate on this labyrinth? Is it because you're not good at it? Because I'm in that group. I never got to the end. The farthest I ever got was maybe, let's see, on this one here, hole 24 is where I would probably have died, or 23. Because it's so easy, that whole making it, you know, that first one, this is actually a pretty hard board. Usually the boards, that's a crazy looking board. i never seen that version. That's neat. I like the 3D perplexes ones. Okay, yeah, this is the board that I... No, is this the board? Because I don't remember that first hole being so hard. But, well, I usually felt like the first five holes were pretty easy to avoid. Well, they made a gazillion versions of this. I don't know why it's ranked so low. Mind Trap. I said earlier when I was talking about Mind Trap 2 that I didn't have Mind Trap. And then I went, oh, yeah, I did have Mind Trap. Again, I don't think these are great games, but they are fun to pull out the puzzles. Some of the puzzles in Mind Trap are good. Some of them are not. They're mostly just brain teasers. Buy a book. Dirty Minds, the game of naughty clues. This is a game, I'm, we're not going to take a look at it, where it gives you a clue that makes you think it's going to be something bad, but it's not. So phase 10, all right, African Taiti, In a Pickle, Jumanji, and the Ungame. I, I, I so hate this game. I reviewed it. You can watch my full review on why I dislike this game so much. I don't get why people like it. I don't get why you talk about a runaway leader problem. Oh, this game's so terrible. Find the legendary Diamond Star of Africa. It's a Finnish game. I wonder if it's considered out of time, like a, a roll and move game. Theme is potentially problematic. That's what I figured. A roll and move game. Eh, okay. In a pickle. I don't think this game's that bad. Basically, you are everything is in, in, in. So I can say, for example, that I find juice in a pickle in a supermarket in a parking lot and you just keep saying you can find this and this and this and this and you can argue over that like for example i could say there is a an elephant in a zoo and then i find a zoo but what what can i where can i find a zoo oh, i found it in a dictionary then i found a dictionary in a house i don't know i find that sort of thing interesting i enjoyed this but obviously i'm alone Jumanji, of course this one's going to get beat up on because while Jumanji, very exciting movie, and I actually liked both of them, even though the second one was about video games, not book, board games, but the board game itself is terrible. Terrible, but a fun movie. The Ungame, not a game. It's just about communication and how to make people think. And I've read stories about people who've used the Ungame to great success. I am not one of those people. All right, Crazy Eights, Tiddlywinks, Blackjack, Solitaire, and Factor Crap. Man, now we're talking about almost every game at, at this point that we're reaching. Uh, we know about almost every single one of these games. But Crazy Eights is the precursor to Uno. That's all it is. It's a public domain version of that. Tiddlywinks. I get Tiddlywinks a four because I'm just really bad at Tiddlywinks, but there could be some fun, interesting versions and variants on Tiddlywinks. Like, this is a pretty cool looking board here, right? These have been around forever. So, it's an entertaining thing, 
But it's like I was never good enough or skilled enough to be able to shoot him anywhere I wanted him to go. Blackjack. I don't know why blackjack's ranked so low. I, I like the concept of blackjack, but that's because I love push your luck. And this is why if I go to a casino, I probably shouldn't go near the blackjack tables. I've never actually played blackjack for money, but I don't think I'd want to because I'm pretty sure I would lose a lot of it. Solitaire. This is not the card game Solitaire. This is, uh, oh, this is, uh, oh, I have played this one. All right. Let's rank this a four. Uh, so I played various versions of this. There's a whole lot of them. And you're essentially just jumping things so there's only one left. The problem with this game is it is a solvable thing. It's a puzzle, right? But it is a singular puzzle. You need to figure out which one to leave open. And then there's an order to jump everything in. I'm not saying I looked this stuff up online to figure out how to do it because I was frustrated and it kept coming down to like three or two. I'm just saying that some people have done that. That's what I've been told. Fact or <laughs> someone said maybe people rate blackjack after coming out of the casino. <laughs> Fact or crap is a really, really bad trivia game. All right. Payday. Simon, Memory, Perfection, and Hangman. Look at this, folks. All games I played, and that's going to be most of the ones down here. All right. Payday is a game that I have some nostalgia for because I thought the idea, I remember seeing this game, that artwork there, which looks like the, the people who made I'm Just a Bill or Schoolhouse Rock uh, made this art for this. Moving on a calendar, getting money, as a kid, I was like, ooh, I can't wait someday to get a payday myself. Ooh. I found out it was less exciting, but, you know, there you go. Simon. Ah, what? I don't hate Simon. Yeah, it's memory, and there's so many versions of Simon. But I like this game a lot. I like the idea of remembering the different colors that are pressed. I'm not very good at it, but I don't dislike it. So I'll give this one a seven. That may be my last seven, but we'll see. Memory. Memory match. I hate it. I know, I know, I just talked about Simon, but for some reason, the position and the colors and the music, bam, 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 I don't know, that works, but just turning over two tiles and seeing if they match. Also, as a parent, you play a decent amount of memory. Now, the only good thing about memory is there comes an age where your kid just whoops up on you. <laughs> uh, perfection. This one's a six. I don't hate this game. I talked about this earlier. I like this game. It's just a speed thing. Boom, 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 boom. Put them all in. I mean, it's a very one note, but you got to do it before they all pop all over the place. It's a very, you know, exciting thrill as the pieces just, I don't know. I just thought that the, I found that to be interesting. Hangman. Well, this is actually the board game of Hangman, which again, I don't hate Hangman. I use Hangman all the time when I have kids and stuff. I don't know that I would use that cover. <laughs> if you think about Hangman, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, oh, I've, I've played. No, I haven't played this version because it's Spanish, but I played one that looked very similar to that. Hangman's just a good way for kids to pass time. I have yet to meet a kid who doesn't like Hangman. They just do. All right, top trumps, connect four, checkers, guess who, and anti-monopoly. Folks, we're almost at the bottom. All right, there's a few games left. Top Trumps, terrible game. It really is. Top Trumps is just essentially war. You have a bunch of cards with different categories on. You name a category, flip two cards, see which one wins. It's terrible. Connect Four. I'm not a big fan of Connect Four because it's solved. I like the idea of Connect Four, but it just plays out the same. Now, variations on Connect Four, we were just talking about this earlier when if you watch a series, there was the tic-tac-toe where you threw the beanbags at it, and I thought that was better. Well, the Connect Four with basketballs that you might find at a, a Chuck E. Cheese, I find that to be really fun, you know, because it takes Connect Four and it involves basketball. So there's a little bit of luck, skill involved in that. But just Connect Four itself, but... One cool thing about Connect Four, sliding that thing and watching all those checkers fall out, that was cool. Everyone likes that. Checkers. Yeah, I know that checkers is a skill game. 
and someone might be really good at checkers. I just find checkers to be so boring. There's, it, I mean, look, I'm not the biggest fan of chess, but you have a big number of opening moves. I mean, I know there's only like five or six that are probably, but then the second move and the decision tree expands. Checkers is so small. I just don't find it interesting, even when you have kings and stuff. And I know a lot of people like it. You play a lot as a kid, but I'm just not very impressed with it. Guess who? Now, guess who is not a great game in essence. There's a lot. Oh, I had this version. There's Andy and Ashley. Um, and there are variations on guess who that I like as you use deduction. It works for kids, but there's a simple way to make guess who work well, and that's just play with two cards each. And that really ramps up the game because I will say, do both of your people have red hair? Do either of your people have a beard? And when you play that way, it's a much, it beat the game is twice as good already. Anti-Monopoly. I don't know a lot about Anti-Monopoly. Um, but Anti-Monopoly, that when the, the person who made this game then took the people of Monopoly to court and, uh, well, they took him to court, and that being because of that, the whole it was an it's well just go read about it online, or I think there might even be a documentary about it. It's really interesting, but not a good game apparently. All right, Monopoly Junior, worst case scenario survival game, Barrel Monkeys, and Game of Goose. Monopoly Junior, have I not played this one? No, just a kid's version of Monopoly. And people hate Monopoly, so there you go. Worst case survival game. I mean, this is a terrible game, but the questions in this are hilarious. How to determine if you're a high-risk kidnap candidate. U.S. citizen backpacking, U.S. tourist, U.S. businessman working for a Fortune 500 company. <laughs> uh, we did this uh, live at one of our board game breakfasts at Dice Tower Con, and it's, it's, it's really funny, but it's a terrible game. Barrel Monkeys, come on. Barrel Monkeys has shown up in movies. I think it's in Toy Story, right? There was the monkeys all get out. But it is just make a chain of monkeys. It's not a good game. Game of Goose. I don't know about this one. The iconic role and move game where virtue is rewarded and vices are punished. It's a very old game and classic game. Not a good game, obviously. But I don't know that I would... Well, I haven't played it, so I wouldn't. I haven't ranked it low. Meh. All right, let's turn the page, and let's take a look at the final page here. Here we go. Roulette, Twister, Pick Up Six, Hi Ho Cherio, Battleship, Oregon Trail Card Game, Parcheesi, Cootie, Battle of the Sexes, and Hungry Hippos. All right, we still got some more after that, but let's take a look at these ones first. Roulette, also probably rated by people who just came out. Now, this one has no skill. You just bet. I know, always bet on black. You don't even have a 50% chance with your stuff because of the green. It's just odds. There's nothing else. And there's the excitement about watching the ball spin around. I would be hesitant to even call this a game. Twister, made popular from a late night talk show, from Johnny Carson, actually. Um... I hate this game because I'm just not flexible at all. But, yeah, Twister and all the implications that come with it. Pick up sticks. I don't like this one either. There's so many better dexterity games out there. I get it that this probably came out. People had a bunch of sticks and stuff. But And there are some neat pick up sticks. Some of the, the, those plastic ones, I'm like, wow, I don't know. There's something about them. I just like the feel of them. And then I can use them in Kerplunk. Hi Ho Cherio. Ah, yeah, this is a kids' game that really is past its prime. I mean, it has some neat cherry pieces in it that you can steal and put in other games. Uh, but it's just there's no choices, and I want my kids to have at least some choices in a kids' game. Battleship. <sighs> there's other better versions of Battleship. I gave this a three. Let's move it to a four. I don't think I hate it that much. No, you know what? Let's move it to a five. Look at that. It went up two bumps. But, I mean, it's just randomly guessing where your opponent put the ships. 
I played with a variant when we were kids. I made up a variant for it where you could put your ships on top of each other, but then if you got hit, they both got hit. It still was... It, it, it raised the odds of you losing faster, but also made it harder to find you. I don't know. And I would have ships cross each other. It actually... You should always do stuff like that because then your opponent would get confused about what ship they actually just destroyed. <laughs> um, whew, this game is so bad. I know there's nostalgia for the Oregon Trail. But even that's not a good game. It's education, but not good. In this game, we had someone die on turn one. I don't know why you would promote a game like that. It's just awful. Parcheesi, or as I call it, an exercise in frustration. I know it's an ancient classic game. That's a cool Lego version of it. There's a lot of beautiful versions of it. It's been around forever, but being around forever doesn't make you a good game. Cootie. Oh, it's been so long since I played Cootie. You're literally just building these cooties here. I don't think my kids have ever played this. My sisters got it. And we built these cooties. I've never got this for my kids. This is one of those ones that I just missed their childhood. It's more of a toy than a game. Battle of the Sexes. You talk about a game that is ridiculous. Uh, this may be the most sexist. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. There's obviously more sexist games. But more, I mean, it's crazy because... The questions they ask the women are so, are, are they just basically assume women are dumber than men. That's just the, the best way to put it there. And that's the way this game comes across. Just, yeah, problematic. All right. Hungry, hungry hippos. Not really a game. He just pressed it and the hippo goes and grabs the marbles. Memes, jokes, cartoons, you know, are all made about this. It's not a very good game. It's entertaining to watch, but I wouldn't buy it. All right, what's the next one? Now we're just going to go down one at a time. Here we go. What is it? Sorry. All right, sorry, the board game. Now, the best thing about sorry is the ability to go, sorry, and you don't mean it to the other person. Uh, but it is essentially just a game of luck where you play a card and you need a one or two to get out. You land on people, you slide. There's some cool aspects of it, but it's just luck. Now, you can fix the game by giving people a hand of cards and they pick which card they're going to play each turn. It's slightly better that way. All right, what's next after sorry? We have Old Maid. Well, <laughs> problematic name. But even if you change the name of this, it's just, you're just randomly grabbing cards. I'd rather, I mean, it's very Go Fish-ish. That's actually some, I like this artwork a lot. I really like that artwork. But yeah, Old Maid, not a great game. All righty, we're getting lower. What's next? Oh, this one makes me sad, but it's not a good game. And that is Mousetrap. So Mousetrap, which is a really cool device, and as a kid, I built Mouse. You know, I was thinking about that. I don't remember playing this game more than twice when I was a kid. But how many times did I build the Mousetrap thing? Probably a hundred or more. It was just so much fun. And seeing it in action and seeing, you know, the guy jump into the bathtub and all. Is that a real life one? That's hilarious. Um... I love the concept of it, but it just is a bad game. You roll to the end, and then you're not trying to get caught by the cage. All righty, next. Well, we talked about Old Maid. Here's its companion game, and that is Go Fish. Go Fish, just, you, we say that now. Go Fish is so much in our lexicon that someone will ask a question, and we'll say, Go Fish, about a hand of cards or something. And it had nothing to do with anything. You just say, do you have a bluefish? No, go fish. Uh, my kids have all played this game, I think, at some form or fashion. But they weren't taught it by me. All right, this next one just makes me sad. Because this is a little bit entertaining. But it's not a great game. And that's Operation. Operation is a dexterity game where you put the tweezers in. I'm so bad at this game. I can't get anything out. I can't get the bread basket out. But it's a game we played a lot as a kid. And that all... Zzz, you know, the, it doesn't do anything, but it makes the noise and stuff. 
the rubber band. Yeah, it's 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 entertaining. We played it a lot as kids. Very iconic. Most of these bottom ones are iconic. The next one is just an awful, terrible game. But again, like Bunko, or not, yeah, this one has made a ton of money, and that's LCR. LCR, you roll dice, and then you pass a chip to the left, throw one in the center, or pass it to the right. You run out of chips, you're out. No strategy, nothing. This game is pure, absolute trash, and yet it sells like all get out. Stocking stuff or whatever it is. Fortunately, no one has ever given this one to me. Well, we knew this one was coming. Monopoly. Here's the problem with Monopoly. You'll notice I gave it a five. This game gets a bad rap. Now, don't get me wrong. Monopoly is not a great game. There's a lot of problems with Monopoly. All right? It's it's too long. It has player elimination. There's a lot of luck involved in it. Monopoly is iconic. I think it's interesting. You know, you talk about Monopoly today. If the Monopoly came out today, it would not do well. The rules would be too long and complicated for most people. But because it's like taught as a rite of passage, people know it. Now, I don't think Monopoly is a good game. I won't play it. But I will say that I don't think it should be at the very bottom of the list like this. It just It's not that bad. Most of the games we've talked about today are worse than Monopoly. But there you go. And... If there's one thing that would make me want to put Monopoly at the bottom of the list, it's the number of theme Monopolies that have been come out as a because of it. We're almost there, folks. Trouble. Hey, you got trouble right here in this game. Trouble's just a move around. The pop matic bubble saves it a little. I mean, who can complain about that? But it's like it's like a worse version of sorry, really. All right, what's next? The game of life. So the game of life, not a great game. I don't think, I think the 40th anniversary edition is worse. I just played game, who did I play game of life with? Oh, my daughter. She had it on her phone and we were at a restaurant and she was like, well, let's play it. I was like, all right, fine. And I ended up making more money there than I'll ever make in this life. Um, but... It's the iconic roll and move. I love the 3D pieces. I love the gambling of it, but it, and I love the spinner. And I'm really surprised no one has tried to make a cool spinner like that in another game. But, yeah, just not a good game. All right. You know what this next game is good for? Absolutely nothing. What is it? Why, my friends? It's war. Flip the top card and see who wins. Now, Top Trumps is technically better than War because you can at least pick a category. War is Top Trumps, but worse. But you can play it with almost any deck of cards. Then next, I don't know if this one's technically a game, but that would be Bingo. Bingo! Get five in a row to win. Everyone Places chips. It's not really a game. It's just a method of gambling. This is the third method of gambling here we've seen in the bottom 100. And not last, but we have Candyland. And you know what? We're going to do them right after each other. We have Candyland and Shoots and Ladders. So Candyland, just, I hate Candyland. I really do. It was my thousandth review, actually. My kids liked it. But it's just turn a card over and see what happens. Now, again, give the kids a hand of three cards. Let them pick which card to play next. And there's some good ideas in there. And the idea of being in a candy land is amazing. I heard they just made a terrible game show based on this. I have not seen it. But, um, yeah, pretty, pretty bad game. Then shoots and ladders. Which, again, I, I have two problems with shoots and ladders. One, I think it's fun to go down in the shoots. And that seems like a problem for the game. Also, that instant win 80 space, but it's just roll and move. It's roll. There's no there's no choices. There's no decisions here. That 28 to 84 space is amazing. This is the board I had as a kid. This exact board, I remember it. That huge slider from 87 to 24 looks so fun, but it's bad. It's confusing. So, shoots and ladders or snakes and ladders. And then finally, the lowest game of all. 
Tech 2. Which I didn't rank because I, I don't know. I mean, it's not really a game. It's just you play it on a piece of paper. Now, there's an interesting version of Tic-Tac-Toe, which I shall tell you about. I've said this on Board Game Breakfast once. Make a grid of Tic-Tac-Toes, nine of them, in a bigger Tic-Tac-Toe. The first person to get Tic-Tac-Toe in one is the winner. But whenever you put an X or an O, so you let someone start, they can put X and O in any of the nine Tic-Tac-Toes. But whichever square they put it in, that's the quadrant that the next person must play in. And then that person will fill one in that quadrant, and it tells you what quadrant the next person plays in. Now, it's still not a great game, but it's much more interesting, and it's much trickier. Um, try it sometime. It's a different way to play it. That's it. After this point now, Board Game Geek, a lot of these games, and you'll see some more bad games down here, and some good games. Here's Formula Day, but this one's no longer in the ratings because Formula D's replaced it. And Nightmare Chess, which is like just a... A variant for chess and things like that. So you'll see a lot of different games down here. And there are probably worse games that you'll see on the list. Fib or not. Fib or not doesn't have enough ratings for it to be considered terrible. But that's it. Going through. Thank you for those of you who joined me. So that's it for live stuff from me this week. And now, once I'm done with this, we're shutting everything down here at the studio. And we're building and preparing I'm not building. I make it sound like we're building sets, but we're moving cameras around and getting everything ready. The video editing is being done for the Winter Spectacular. So the Winter Spectacular is going to launch on Monday with Board Game Breakfast. And we'll be coming in uh, and talking about the year as a whole and different things that we found interesting about the year. And then the top 10 lists begin with the, one of the first ones being done by my two daughters, Ruby and Violet, will be coming on and saying what their 10 favorite games were from the year and then uh, we'll be playing some games live over the course of this we'll be doing lots of top tens so it'll be through monday to thursday friday we're shutting the dice tower down briefly because we need to clean this building so spring cleaning because it feels like spring here and then the week after the winter spectacular um the dice tower will be mostly taking the week off with the exception of the vassals me and my kids will come in and we're gonna be doing marble racing don't forget, if you want to get a marble into that marble racing, if you want to send a marble in the mail to me, we'll get it in the racing. It's just for fun, silliness. Then you need to email me at tom at dicetower.com to get that done because we need to get those in the mail as soon as possible. But just going to be silly fun. And then after that, full bore back to normal. I have a whole shelf over here of games to review. And almost all those games are better than the ones I just talked about. But not all. Some bad reviews coming. Some amazing games we're talking about. Stay tuned. Thank you all for joining me today. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Have a fantastic weekend. Stay safe.